Thus far, we've been working with systems measured with absolute displacement, such as these two masses, each of which has a displacement measured with respect to fixed ground in the variables x and y. But of course, sometimes it's helpful to work with relative measurements where, say, a, the compression or stretch of a spring is really a comparison of the two ends of the spring with respect to each other. And here's an example of those same two masses, except the second one is measured with a relative displacement. So we have an absolute displacement x for uh, m1, and then d is the relative displacement between the two masses. Let's do an example. Let's take those two masses and add a spring and ask to find the differential equation with a prescribed input x and a relative displacement d as the output. And we can do this in three steps uh, to work with relative displacements. The first is we can always define new variables of convenience to us to help solve a problem, such as we can define an absolute displacement uh, for uh, anything that uh, is not already defined as such. Then those absolute variables are very helpful for applying Newton's law, uh, at, which we can use to derive our equations. And then finally, we can write in term, rewrite the equations in terms of the relative displacements. So what do we mean by defining an absolute y relative to ground? Well, this second mass, we can actually measure its displacement with a new variable y that we define for our own convenience. And that allows us then to define y is just equal to x plus d. So we have a new variable that's just for our convenience. Then we can use that variable when we apply Newton's law. So when we sum our forces, that's just going to be equal to fk, the force in the spring, is equal to m2 times y double dot. And we always want to apply Newton's law in an inertial reference frame. So we need an absolute displacement such as y in order to do that. An inertial reference frame has to be either fixed or moving at constant uh, velocity. I won't show the details of fk, except just to note that we have m2 y double dot is equal to k times y uh, x minus y, which gives us our equations of motion, except this is in terms of absolute variables. So we have absolute displacements. Now, of course, what we were asked for was to find a differential equation with output d. So all we need to do then is to get rid of y uh, by substituting in x plus d. So once we do that, we have m2 times x plus d, both double dot, is equal to k times x minus quantity x plus d. Uh, we can quickly verify that this is just going to be equal to m2 times d double dot. I'm going to move all the d's to one side. So we have plus k times d is equal to negative m2 times x double dot. So notice that this is in the input-output form that we desire where d is the output, and it's in order of decreasing derivatives. And then x is actually an input as a prescribed displacement, so we put it on the right-hand side of the equation.